Hello everyone, I am Vignesh Ishpande, the open source head of coding club IIT Guwahati and I welcome you all to the advanced Git and GitHub workshop of Code Peak 2022. So let's begin with the workshop. First, let me walk you through the workshop structure. First, we will be covering what is Git and GitHub and then we will be moving on to the installation and setup for both Windows and Mac. After this, uh, we will be learning about pull requests, branching, advanced git commands etc and then we'll end with more stuff about github let's move on to what is, what is git and github so what is git uh, git is a version control system so you would ask what is a version control system version control system is basically a system which will track changes made in any set of files and it is used usually for uh, co coordinating among a set of programmers uh, git is absolutely essential when uh, there are multiple programmers working on a single repository. Uh, Git tracks uh, not only the changes that you have made, but also when those changes were made and by wh whom. So if any time during a project, if you mess up, you could easily revert back to a previous version of your code. That's the power of Git. So what is GitHub? GitHub is a cloud-based hosting service that lets you manage your Git repositories. It also offers you a plethora of other tools that you can use to better manage your Git repositories. That we'll, we will also be discussing these tools along the way. Now, moving on to the installation part. So, so let's start the installation from by downloading Git Bash from the official website, which is git slash dash hcm.com. You'll find the link of this website in the PDF and uh, you can just see from there, but I get slash scm.com. So let's go to the website. Uh, here we'll be clicking on downloads, and you can download according to the system you have. But uh, we are, here we are first dealing with Windows installation, and the Mac installation would be different, which should be covered by my friend Fianchu. So let's click on Windows, uh, click here to download. So we can once this is downloaded, for which I already have downloaded in the interest of time, we can go to the download, uh, we can start the installer. We want it to make a difference, so yes. This is the public license, you, you don't need to read it. Uh, you might, you may if you really want to, but you don't need to read it. So just click on next. Uh, we are here we are selecting the components which we want to be installed. Uh, we can leave it as it is, but be sure to be sure that additional icons is selected. If it's not selected, please do select it. It will help you in the future. So uh, after this, click on next. Here we are choosing the ed default editor used by Git. So I you can choose any editor which you use frequently or which you are comfortable with. I personally am comfortable with uh, Visual Studio Code, so I'll be using Visual Studio Code as my default editor. Uh, so that and next. So we'll click on next. Then here we have to adjust the initial name of the, we have to adjust the initial branch name. Uh, so the initial branch name can be anything but in default by get names it master and we can let uh, let it be the default version which is let get decide and move ahead then uh, this is about adjusting the path variable or how we'd be using it from the command line it's best to stick to the recommended option which is use get from the command line and also also from the third party software so we'll leave it at the default option and click on next then uh, choosing then is choosing the SSH, SSH executable. Here also the default option is uh, you can stick to the default option, which is use bundled open SSH and click on next. Here we are choosing the HTTPS transport backend. Here we can stick to the default option, which is use the open SSL library and click on next. Here we are configuring the line ending conversation, converse, conversions. Uh, we are configuring the line ending conversions. So here also we can leave it on the default option. Just check out window style and commit Unix style line endings and click on next. 
here we are configuring the terminal emulator to use with git bash we can leave it to the default option which is use in tty and click on next here we are choosing the default behavior of git pull which is uh, which we can also left to the default option which is already given by the installer which is uh, and we do not need to change it you can click on next for same for the credential manager you can uh, leave it to the uh, uh, we can leave it to the default option the git credential manager would be uh, configured and we'll get a credential helper so uh, that uh, we can leave it on default and click on next okay, for country configuring the extra options again we can uh, leave it to the default choice which is enable the file system cache and uh, click on next these are experimental options so you do not need to choose any of them you can uh, just click on next uh, click on install and uh, these you can you can leave experimenting with this and you can install this all the options you have selected and left on default mode right now you can change according to your uh, uh, according to your preferences later on but right now as we're just starting and don't know much about it it's best to uh, it's best to leave it to default to get uh, so that you can explore later on and have a good functioning right now so we'll click on launch get back as we need to use it right now and finish so the get back has been launched let's configure our username and um, let's see the good configurations username and user email as well so first if you want to view the git config command uh, and how we can use it let's uh, type git config this gives us uh, information this will give us information about how we can use the git config command Yeah, I think it should be visible now. Uh, uh, this should give us uh, this will give us the whole uh, information about how we can use this, uh, uh, how we can use the git config command, and how we can set different kind different configurations. Right now, we want to set git user email and user uh, user email and user uh, name configuration for which. Uh, for which i'll be showing you the commands right now so the git for git uh, for setting up the global user name we'd have to write git config dash dash global because you want to set up set it up as a on a global view and uh, user dot name and then you can write the username you want i'll be writing diy Okay. Yeah, um, and our username has been up, uh, has been initiated, and uh, we, same, similarly we can set up our user email for which we we'll have to write get config slash global user dot email, and you can write your user email here whichever you want to utilize for the whole git github process now we can check that our configurations have been set up for which we can check the list of configurations of git configurations to access that we'd have to write git config dash dash list so here my username and user email have been set up and now uh, so that's it uh, from here we'd first cover the mac installation which my friend priyan should be covering and thank you this is priyan and i will guide you through the mac installation of git this is a pretty straightforward process i'll guide you through two of the steps both are pretty simple the first one is the homebrew method like for this method you need homebrew installed on your mac if you have already homebrew installed then you can ignore this step otherwise you can head over to the homebrew official site and copy this link just paste, paste it in your terminal and 
enter your password and it will, it will start installation of homebrew on your mac it's already installed on my mac so i'll skip this step now you can install git via this command brew install git homebrew is like a package which install which is used to install many things on mac like python or its libraries so it's a pretty useful thing so let's install git using brew just type in the command brew install git it will run in actually git is already installed so again i won't run it like here git is already installed and up to date so okay so the second method is the package install method this is also very simple just head over to the git official site and here here you have to head over to the download section mac os and we just did this process pre install git now binary installer this is the installer for git similar to that on package installer on windows just download it it would take a few minutes and yeah that's it i'll save it on my desktop it's like a 28 mb file just click on this um this prompt is because apple by default does not allow installation of any any software downloaded from internet you have to enable it from the settings so head over to privacy and settings like if you have a latest mac os ventura then this would there on the left hand side you would have privacy and security tab just click on it and here it is git was blocked from use because it is it is not from an identified developer like just click open anyway here again password it would ask your password now it would ask you to open it now just continue continue con install again password and yeah now it's in now git is installing so yeah that's all now you can configure git on your pc open terminal you can use spotlight for opening terminal just i'll clear it this and you can now use and you can configure your name and email id like my name is priyanshu srivastava so i will get config dash dash global user dot name priyanshu srivastava get config global user dot email just like abc at gmail dot com you can check your configured username and user email using git config list so here like abc at gmail dot com and answer so that's all so you have so you have installed git on your mac and configured the username and email id first the same thank you very much so after the installation and configuration part the question that must pop into your mind is how do i use git fret not i'm here to tell you about that firstly we are going to have a look at a few basic git commands so let's get started so the first command that we have is cd it helps you to move from one directory to another so as you can see right now i am in the root directory suppose i want to go to the desktop directory so i'll simply type cd desktop and press enter so as you can see it's showing desktop here it indicates that right now i'm in the desktop directory in case you want to be extra sure of whether you are in your desired directory or not we have yet another command for that that is pwd so this command sh shows you the present working directory all you have to do is type pwd and press enter so as you can see it is showing desktop here which means that right now we are in the desktop directory okay so but what if you want to move back to the previous directory you simply type cd and two dots 
and press enter. So as you can see, we are right back to our root directory. Now that you know how to traverse between directories, let's see how you can create a directory of your own. For that, we have another command called mkdir. So in order to create a directory of your own, you simply need to type mkdir and directory name. For example, I'm going to use here git workshop. So now let's try moving to the directory that we just created. As you can see that it is showing git workshop here, which means that we were successful in creating the directory named git workshop. So that's how you create a directory of your own. Now, in order to check the contents of our directory, we have yet another command called ls. Now, if we use ls here, we'll see nothing because a newly created directory, git workshop, has nothing yet. So, how do you add files to your directory using git bash? For that, we have yet another command, touch. Yes. You simply have to type touch and then file name. For example, I'm going to use file1.txt and press enter. And your file will be created. So, if we use ls now, we'll see file1.txt, which is the only content of our current working directory that is get workshop so similarly i can create as many files as i want so as you can see it is showing all the three files here when i type ls Now, how do you edit these files? You can do that easily by using the command nano and then file name. So as you can see, it opens a text editor here. And here you can type anything that you want to add into your file. For example, Now, in order to save it, press Ctrl X, Y, and press Enter. Now, how do you check the contents of your file? Whether the changes that you made have been saved or not? For that, use the command called cat and then file name. So, as you can see, you can see the text that we just typed in our file1.txt. Welcome to the Get Workshop. So that's how you can check the contents of your file. Now we're done with enough basic Git commands to move on to the next part, which is initialization. But before we move on to the next command, I'd like to tell you a bit about something called repositories. Git and GitHub are basically all about repositories. Now it's such an important topic. It will be covered in brief detail in the latter part of this bit workshop, but for now, keep it in mind that repositories are nothing but folders that are associated with Git. Now suppose you want to use a particular folder as a repository. You know that this location will be used as a repository, but how do you tell that to your computer? You initialize it using git. For that, we have yet another command called git init. You just have to move into the directory that you want to initialize as a git repository and type git in it. For example, let's, let's initialize a present working directory git workshop as a git repository. So as you can see, it is showing initialize empty git repository in the current location. So as you can see, this .git file, it is the file 
that keeps track of all the changes that we are going to make in this particular repository. So, now that you have learned initialization, we can move on to the next part, which is committing the changes. Now, committing changes in Git involves two steps. First one is staging. Staging is basically the step where you tell Git which files you want to be tracked by it. And the next step, committing is where you finally commit the changes that you have made. So, let's try implementing these two steps. <clears throat> so, as you can see, I've added some dummy text to the uh, rest of the two files as well. Now, let's try adding them to the staging area. For that, we have another command called git state git add file name. Now, in order to check where, whether our file has been added to the staging area or not, we have another command called git status. So as you can see, our file 1.txt has been added to the staging area and is ready to be committed while our other, our other two files, file 2.txt and file 3.txt are still untracked. So let's add file 2.txt to, to the staging area as well. Now, as you can see, file 2.txt has also been staged now. Now, what if we add modify a file after staging it? Let's see what happens. Now, if we try checking git status, let's see what happens. So, as you can see, our file do.txt is still staged, but there are some stage, but there are some changes which are yet to be committed, which are yet to be staged. <clears throat> so, in order to commit those changes as well, we first need to restage file 2.txt. Now, what if you had many files in your present working directory rather than just three files? Would you be adding them one by one by using git add file name? No, right? It would be very time consuming. So, for that we have git add dot. If you use this command, all the files present in your present working directory will be staged for committing. So, if we check get status now, you can see all our changes are, have been staged to be committed. So, that's how you come stage changes for commits. Now, how do we commit these changes? For that, we have another command called get commit hyphen m, and then we put a short message describing the changes that we have made. I'm simply going to type initial commit. And as you can see, it shows three files change, five insertion. So that's how you commit changes in Git. Now you've learned how to commit changes, but what if you want to undo a change that you've already committed, don't worry, you can easily undo it by reverting that commit. So, let's try making a change after the initial commit to let's say file do dot file three dot txt.
But before we move on to reverting a commit, I would like to tell you something about getreflog. Getreflog basically keeps track of all the local commits made in your current repository. This expression that you're seeing here is called is called commit ID, and you'll need it while reverting a commit and also while comparing the stages of state of your project on some particular commit. So, for example, if you want to check what are the changes made after the initial commit, you type git diff and then the commit id. As you can see, it, the file3.txt was hey previously and in the next commit 374681e, I added am Himanshi as well. So that's what the changes that were made after the commit 2965p99. So git diff is helpful in checking what are the changes made after some particular commit so that you can decide whether you want to revert the, the next commit or not. So, how do you revert a commit? You can revert a commit easily by typing git revert and then the commit id. Now, just simply close the text editor and as you can see, the second commit is reverted. Now, if you check the contents of your file 3.txt, it is just hey. That's how you revert to commit. I hope you guys are enjoying the workshop. Now we will talk about branches. Why branching? Let's see with an example. Let's suppose I am working on a project and midway I get an idea that we can implement this feature in my project. But I'm not sure whether my friends who are working with me in this project will like it or not. So here GitHub has an amazing feature. I can make a new branch and implement my idea over there without affecting the main project's code. Then after completing that feature, I can show it to my friends and if they like it, we can merge it back to the main project. So like over here it's shown, this green line is the main master branch. and this is the feature that I was talking about and this is not affecting my main branch line because this is an alternative branch. But if I feel that this is good enough to be merged, I can then merge it back. Over here, if you read this, there is one more feature I'm using and it's XYZ. So we can have multiple branches. That's not an issue and then we can merge any of them. So this gives us freedom to independently work on different modules and merge the modules when you're finished developing them. Let's see some git branches operations. So you might be wondering how we'll make branches. So, so over here, this is a repo. I've made this website club courses. It was a task and I made that. So like I'll first of all clone this to my PC. I'll copy this. First I'll come to my desktop so that every file is visible. I'll clone this website. So now as this is cloned, I have all the files over here. Now I'll go to this directory. 
So now I am on this directory. I'll open VS Code and see how it's there. I've opened VS Code and then I'll open this folder in VS Code. This is the folder. This is the HTML file. And now I'll show you the website. So this is the website. Uh, so I I feel like that over here the search button should not be in yellow let's suppose that's my feature that this search button should not be in yellow and I want to change this to something called blue let's assume blue and this is my feature so and I'm not sure that whether my friends will like it or not for working with me in this project so I make a new branch First of all, I'll check which branch I am. So if we use this command, it will show that I'm on my main branch and that's the only branch right now. So I'll, cre I'll create a branch. So this is the tag over here. So this is the command to create a branch. So kit branch branch. So my branch name should be feature. So now if I see branch, I have two branches now, but this is in green and an asterisk represent that this is the active branch over here. So now to go through, now to work on feature branch, I must check out to feature branch. So this can be done by this command. Now if I'll check once again, now you can see the difference. Now I am on my feature branch. So now I'll come to VS Code and let's suppose over here I'll change this to primary so that it's in blue color. Now I'll reload this and as you can see it's blue in color. Now we can make more changes. Alright, welcome to Git Workshop. So suppose these are my changes over here. Now I'll come over here and see status. So as it says modified, I've modified the home.html file. Now I'll add this to my feature branch. And if I check once again, it's now green. So it's it means it has been added. So now I'll Comment feature added. So it says one I change two insertions, two deletions. And this is all on my feature branch. Now I can push it to the feature branch, but because now the GitHub's policies have been changed, so now we have to use a github token instead of password earlier it could have been done with password so i'll go to settings I'll go to developer settings personal access token i'll generate one token you have to enter your password workshop and i'll click over here so this will give me all access to repo related operations and then I'll go and generate token so now I'll open github again and go to view now it's like to push it to a specific branch there's a different operation it's not if you write git push it won't happen because this is not on the master branch it's on the, some other branch so you have to use this command so it's so it it has been done 
but as i have done it before so it's not asking me a generalized person personal token but if you would be doing it for the first time it will ask for your github url and then it will ask for a password but now as the policies have been changed you don't have to enter your password but you have to enter this token which you can generate on your own account and then it will show this thing so now if i check over here as you can see feature has been added so if i'll reload this one now over here feature is there and over here feature added commit is there and if i'll open this thing we can see the changes over here welcome to git workshop and then primary but if i go to main branch If I'll go to main branch and see the this same file, it will be different. See, it's warning and welcome. There's no the there they are not the changes that we made. So this this way the branches happen. We have completed our feature and we have pushed it to the feature branch. Now the next step is to merge the feature to the main branch. So we can do this from here also, but and we can do it from the terminal also i'll show you from the terminal so as written over here to merge a specific branch you need to keep some things in mind to avoid branch clashes so one is that you should be on the branch you want the things to be merged at and you need to write branch name of the branch you want to merge so i'll show you with an example so right now if we see we are on the feature branch but we want main branch and on main branch we want feature branch to be merged so we check out to to main branch now we are on the main branch and then we'll merge git merge feature this is the branch we need to merge and now we'll push the changes to the main branch so now as we'll see on the main branch feature has been added so if you remember that we wrote primary and welcome to git workshop and it's there and it's on the main branch not the feature branch now as the feature has been added we don't need feature branch anymore so we can delete it so to delete it there are two main commands and it is advised to use the first command because it does not hard deletes everything in this it will show error if you are not on the branch and otherwise it will ask you to not delete stuff when there are unfinished merges but this will force deletes everything so this is not advised now we'll use git branch t feature so it has been deleted because we were not on the branch we want to delete if i would have been on feature branch and use this command it would have shown an error so if, if i see over here things have been deleted from there but it's not happened on the website because we haven't used the command to delete the branch from here now i'll use this okay. we want to delete right so origin delete which so this will push the delete to the website so if you'll see now it's one branch only and it's main branch but still the feature we added it's there so it's primary welcome to git workshop 
so these are the main operation in git branches so i hope you all have understood git branching now we'll move to the next section hey everybody i hope everything is fine and you are going well with the git workshop let's move on to the next topic that is merge conflict i have created a basic example here in this repository mc sim uh, here roshan have created a pull request and you can see here that there's a merge conflict uh, coming here so let's check it out first yeah so there's a lot of stuff going on here uh, before moving on let's uh, make ourselves understand with what's a merge conflict so basically merge conflict is a condition where two or more users have committed the same line of a file let me show you through a diagram let's say this is our repository mc sim and this is user a and this is user b this user did some changes on line 1 2 and 3 and created a pull request on mcsim mcsim repository let's name this pull request 1 and same to a uh, same as a b created some changes on 5 6 and line 7 and did a pull request 2 so uh, as per the definition uh, there's uh, uh, there's no common line on which user a and b have committed so this re uh, pull request will pass and this pull request will pass and they both can successfully merge even though they have added the changes on a same file now let's say a did some changes on 4 line 4 and similar to a b did some changes on line 4 as well on the same file they are doing the changes on the same file so now uh, as per the definition of a merge conflict we have some problem here as uh, there are two changes done on the same line by two different users so now the pull request will not pass and will throw a merge conflict as shown here yeah so now let's move on to our conflict let's click on resolve conflict and now uh, yeah so now you can see some stuff going on here uh, it's highlighted in red and you can see some arrows equal to sign so yeah don't get intimidated with this uh, this this is simply telling you that uh, the user one has did some changes here oh wait let me highlight this yeah so this is done by user a and this is done by user b which is in this case is done by me so uh, this is telling me that you have two options to choose from uh, 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 first one is this done by user a and the second one is done by me so either you have to choose this one or this one as the uh, main text which will go on so let's suppose uh, as i'm the owner of this repository i choose this one and discard this change so just to resolve this conflict i will remove this text text uh, just select this remove this and yeah remove this arrows to remove this equal to sign and remove this main sign to and yeah now it's fine now you can simply click on mark as resolved and click on commit merge now yeah this merge button will not merge your prs this will basically merge all your uh, conflict changes which you just did into the add text one branch now uh, as you can see here there's no merge conflict anymore so now you can simply click on merge pull request confirm merge and yeah your pull request is merged merge now so yeah this was a very basic example set up by me uh, it could it can be very complex in uh, some production cases so yeah just follow the guidelines and uh, do the necessary changes accordingly thank you this is from my side hello everyone my name is karan gar now i'll be telling you about github just a reminder that github and git are not same both are different things Git is a VCS or version control system which tracks of code changes over a period of time. 
while GitHub is a hosting platform service layered, layered over Git for tracking the code changes, but on a cloud. Just keep that in mind. So let's start with creating an account on GitHub. Go to the official website, click on sign up and enter your details. I recommend, recommend you to use your university's email ID. It will be helpful later on. That is all needed to create an account on GitHub. Now, before we get into GitHub's features, I'd like to tell you about GitHub Student Developer Pack. It is an amazing initiative taken by GitHub for the students. It provides various apps, softwares, and development tools. It even has lots of courses for free, which are not usually available for free. And you can also avail bundles to conduct your own events like hackathons and courses. Uh, I'll show you the official website. So if you go to the education.github.com slash pack, you can see the, the these are the bundles I was talking about. So if you want to conduct your own hackathon, these are all the apps and software that, you, that are enough to make that. And if you want to start your own web development journey, these are the apps it provides. If you want to conduct your own virtual event or have a course on creative. And it, from basically every domain you can find a software or an app which with many benefits from security analytics from mobile to developer tools and design these lots of apps are present here so i request you all to sign up for the student developer pack as soon as possible there's lots of opportunities and lots of features to explore now we we'll get into github one of the words that uh, you come across the word repo a lot when you're working on GitHub. So repo is basically a short form for repository. A repository contains all of a project's files and each file's revision history. So again, for example, this is a Synby project on GitHub. It's an open source maths project. If you see here, this is basically what a repository is, all of this. So repository contains all the code of the project. So any change in repository means any change in the code and any change in the code will change the outcome of the project. <clears throat> this is what the repository is. So it contains every file that relate that is related to a project. So these are the folders too and in these folders you can store this file. And it contains all the revision, all the history, uh, a number of commits, commits the history of it 14 months ago, it was edited 5 months ago, 9 days ago. <coughs> so these are all, this is what the repository is. Basically. And we will be creating our new, our first repository on our, on our own account. So if you go to your account on GitHub, click on the drop down button on the top right corner and create a new repository. Uh, give your repository a name. You can make it like Git Workshop 2.0. Okay. You can initialize it with the add readme file, but we'll do that later on. We'll add a readme file later. So readme file is basically a summary for your project. So create a repository. It will take you to this file. So you just create your first repository, and every code related to your project will come here. And also repository helps you to collaborate with other contributors so any change they do it in the repo will be executed on your project too so we just created our first repository now adding files to our remote repository what is the remote repository there are two types of repository a remote repository which is on your github and a local repository which is on your device which is laptop so go to your project folder Add your GitHub repo link as remote for pushing files to the GitHub repo. Like I mentioned, the name of a remote normally should be origin. So, for example, if so, let's say if you want to start a project and you do that by first creating a new folder, right? So this is the folder that I'm making a project in. Open this folder and you need to git bash here. So first step was to git initialize. 
if you want to check what is the remote origin of this source we need to do it by get remote minus v dash v so it shows empty basically we had to specify from where it should fetch or push the data so you do that by the code get remote add origin and the url of the repository and that is done by so this is the url you copy it and paste it in now if you again check it remote minus dash v so it shows you can see the origin and fetch and push from where it will fetch the data from and from where it will push the data to and the default name of the branch is master so we just initialize and now if, now say if you want to add a file to it so add a file to our project let's say if you want to add this readme file to our project so let's first say this is a readme file and you add some let's say first Lines and then some lines. So do this, save the changes, and you add this here. So you basically added a file on your local repository. Now you want to do the same changes on your remote repository, and you can do that by through your git bash. First, you check the status which files have been tracked and which not. Yes, status. You can see that readme.md has been added, but it's not being tracked right now. So, you do that by typing git add dot and get status. You can see it turns green now, it means it, being, it is being tracked. Now, get commit the changes which you have done right now. First commit git commit minus n dash n. So one file change two insertions. Now git push. Since this is the first time you're pushing the file, you can just copy this code and paste it. And it has been pushed here, so if you Refresh this your repository. You can see the readme.md file has been added to your repository. And you can see that readme.md file is automatically read by the GitHub and it shows the output here. So I show you, I tell you what readme file is actually. So right now we just learned how to push a file from your local repo to your remote repo. So all the code, if you have any, if you forget the code, you can just refer the slides or you can just Google it. Now I'll be telling about the readme.md file just talking about. It is actually the most important part of the Git repository. This file summarizes about the project and helps other users to understand about your code. .md refers to the markdown file and some basics of the markdown. It's a David. It's a derivative from HTML, so it's not very difficult language. Uh, I'll show you an example of markdown. So if you go to the same project of Senpai, I can see the um, .md files here. So this is the readme.md, and this is the readme file executed. So you can see they have showed all the versions it uses. It summarizes it. what does it actually do. It tells you how to download it, how to use its documents, how to install it, and if you are contributing it, it just takes some stated some co contributing guidelines. So basically, a readme file summarizes your project. If someone from outside wants to know what your project is, the first thing you should see is the readme file of your project. It's very important and. It's not very difficult to make a good video file. So, next, uh, one of the features of the GitHub is starring and following. You can star the repositories 
you find interesting so you may come back to later for contributing or just using them in your own projects follow the people whose progress and activity you want to follow on the github you will see the repos that start people that followed and you get to learn a lot so just like on social media on instagram facebook like you follow and just follow people you can follow people on github also github is a social media for coders and starting a repository is important so if you find something useful starting actually helps the project also since it since it bec it helps the project becomes more di discoverable and more contributions are made to that project and people trust the project more if it has more number of stars and you can follow people if you find them interesting so if i go to my file so this so the, if i scroll down so these are the basically the progress of these people that i follow or the progress of the projects that i've been following so say a hugging face tokenizer which has been recommended for me since i have started this hugging face before so it is actually very helpful for you as well as the contributors as well as the owner of the project so yeah github is basically a social network for coders so there's one thing known as github profile readme it is a special readme file like i told you a readme file summarizes about your project a profile readme summarizes about you it is a special readme file that shows whenever someone opens your github profile an awesome place to tell people about yourself your interest and projects just basically leave an impression onto the visitor you can include a variety of stuff like badges stats various cards like your latest blogs if you write like blogs songs that you listen to and your email id and other cool things to show up so it's basically like a resume but an informal one so you can add a if i show show you an example if you go to my profile this is what a readme file looks like if you can tell you you can tell him about the tell them about your interest on the projects that you are working on you can even add anything extra like you can link your spotify account to it and languages that you know or languages that you work in the visitor gets an idea about who you are and if you he can work with you or not so this is also important so if you want to make a readme files again you have to make a new repository go to the new repository and the repository name should be same as your username so grg current 03 so it says grg current 03 is a special repository that you can use to add a readme.md to your github profile and it already exists in account as i cannot make it but you can make it and once you make it it will take you to a page like this and you can edit it it is again a .md file so you can edit it using markdown language so this is what the code looks like let's say so yeah create a repository with the exact same name as your github username example grgcon03 which is my username then create a readme.md file inside that repo and start yeah one important thing is when you create that repo If you make a repository with the same name as your username, you have to initialize, initialize it with a readme file because that is what makes it a uh, readme profile readme file. So you can create a readme.md file inside that repo and start edit, editing it in GitHub itself. This is the link that I provided that makes it easier to create beautiful readmes very quickly so you don't have to actually learn the readme file you can just click on the things that you need and it will do it automatically for you and i've added other links too to make your readme file more interesting so you can uh, you can link your blogs your music taste like your github stats and yeah it, you can make the you can spend a lot of time on readme and make it as interesting as you want Now another feature feature of GitHub is GitHub Pages. You can get your own domain to host your personal website with your GitHub account, all for free. Very easy to uh, usually 
when you deploy a website it takes it's the domain name of the website is not usually free you have to pay some money to get a unique domain name but github does that for you for free so you can personalize the website that he deploys whenever you make any changes in code and push it into the repo so if you are making a simple website from html CSS or any complex website if you make any changes in the code it will deploy it so you don't have to worry about whether you don't have to make the changes in the website itself so as for example um let's first see how you can make a github pages portfolio website so create a repository with the name your github your name dot github dot io for example grg current zero three dot github dot io right if you go here new repository grg current zero three dot github dot io so you have to make this and create repository I've already made this account, made this repository on my account. So if I take you here, so you can see it's a very simple website with only index.html and style.css and with a few images. And you, you can make your own or you can download a template from website and make changes it and push it to your own files to the above repository. So you go to the settings, go here and pages. Uh, so your site is live at hdb.jigk. So I've already deployed this site at this domain name, but if you try it for the first time, so your it won't show this. So you have to make the changes, save it, and then push the changes, and it will automatically deploy it. So if I visit the website here. It's a very simple website which shows the current time of it with this one image. That is what basically your GitHub pages helps you do. It provides uh, it's very helpful, and you can also help you custom domain allows you to serve your profile from domain other than gr03.github.io. So if you are working on multiple projects and you deploy multiple websites, you can use this to do that. As soon as you push, you'll be able to see the deployment in a few minutes. Also, you can deploy your own projects as well. So, so that is all for the features of GitHub. And that's all from my side. Thank you.